quiet now. <laughs> now we're Facebook Live now, guys. Okay, Please, okay. I've got to Ooh. introduce you. Uh, hello, everybody on Lionsgate UK Facebook page. I hope you're well. I'm Jamie East, and we are here to celebrate the launch of the wonderful, the majestic La La Land, which is in the cinemas today, right? And I'm very pleased and honoured to be joined by the fantastic Damien Chazelle, Emma Stone, or Emily Stone, and Ryan Gosling. How are you guys? Thank you. Okay. Oh, good. good. Thank you. <laughs> How are you? Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And that's all Very for today. Nice. <laughs> good night, everyone. <laughs> uh, before we get on to the live questions, which you can uh, put in and submit down below right now, uh, let's get into the. How does that feel watching that for the billionth time, I presume? Oh, I, I haven't watched the trailer that many times. No? Not a billion. Not when you've lived the truth. No, no, I was exaggerating slightly. <sighs> yeah, only slightly, though. Um, uh, it's really cool. It's really wonderful. It's joyous. Well, the, everyone is really excited. <laughs> it's joyous. It that is. Was a good, yeah, look at, he said that with a straight face as well. Um, you never know for sure with Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we get some questions from the fans? Oh, you yes. don't think it's joyous? <laughs> why don't, right, why don't you know what? Break, break it up. It's joyous, break it up. <laughs> Do you want to fight about this? Let's get some questions. <laughs> it's joyous. God damn it. <laughs> right. This is for all three of you from Rachel Webb. Hello, Rachel. Uh, congratulations on the Golden Globes, uh, first of all. But her question is, did you expect to have all this success when you first started making the movie? Or is it, is it once you saw the finished uh, product, did you kind of think, sorted, nutted that one? I'm not, familiar, <laughs> I'm not familiar with that term. Uh, that has a different I really connotation. Put, yeah, no, no, I really the put States. the wrong terminology. Let's move on. Let's ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> I smell the rat. <laughs> that, that has, uh, uh, did, no, you expect, did you expect no, the film to have like that? <laughs> Damien, pull us back from the brink of stupidity, please. Um, yes, that's my job. That's, that's why they bring me here. That is uh, why they pay uh, big bucks. <laughs> and admit that the trailer's joyous. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer is joyous. No, no, I don't think we, uh, or I, I didn't expect, uh, uh, I mean, you know, it kind of, um, I think we all probably had the same hope, but, uh, but I don't know. I, I've actually never been as nervous uh, bef before premiering a movie as I was with this. And it wasn't because I didn't like it or think it was good. I, I, it's just because it felt like, you know, sort of an outlier kind of movie and, yeah. and wasn't really like anything that was, that we were seeing in the movie theaters. So on the one hand, it's very exciting. On the other hand, it was kind of scary. What about you, Emily? I mean, I, uh, it's really, I, I think it's so amazing when people react in a way that's similar to the way you felt when you read the script. Mm. I think reading the script, it felt like something that could be, um, you know, really powerful and impactful and, you know, and joyous. Yeah. Joyous. Yeah. Um, but you joyous. Never know. You never know. Joyous? Do we, we <laughs> joyous? Go ahead, say joyous. I said the trailer was joyous. Thank oh, <laughs> and we're done here. Good night, Thank everyone. You. Thank uh, you. Damien, this is one just for you from Jane Smith. Hello, Jane Smith. Uh, now, a major theme in the film, <laughs> he's not even listening to me. The major theme in the film was having to make compromises on the road to achieving your dreams. You know this, you wrote the thing. Uh, as an artist, what was your guiding principle when faced with difficult creative decisions? That's one hell of a question, Jane Smith. Uh, <laughs> my guiding principle. Um, well, uh, I mean, one thing with this movie actually was that um, you know it took a while to get off the ground. And um, how did you start with a blank sheet, first blank sheet of paper and a pen? Like, well, how did you get from that to to this? Well, it started just with the idea of doing a musical um, in modern day Los Angeles, um, and. I've, I mean, I've loved musicals for a long time. I'd wanted to do one for, for a long time. And, and it became a matter, I think, of trying to stick to a certain vision over the course of you know, the number of years that it took to get the money. And then, and then, and then obviously making a movie like this requires a lot of uh, you know, machinery in a yeah. way. You know, there's lots of different departments that have to come together and work together, you know, from dance to production design to camera. Um, uh, so I think the, the, the challenge, actually in a way for all of us, I think was just to, to make sure that amidst all of that, we just stayed true to, to what we thought the movie should be. You know, a certain kind of tone, a certain kind of approach, um, a certain philosophy of what a musical could be, um, and try not to deviate from that. Stay on target, that is the uh, answer there. Thank you, Jane. Now, Aaron, uh, this is for you, Ryan and Emily. Uh, what resonated in the story the most with you in regards to your own careers whilst you were struggling? 
Um, well, I mean, we had the opportunity to share with Damien some of our audition stories, which, of course, Mia is an auditioning actress, so I had had many experiences, I think, similar to the as, one As that crushing she as it looked oh. in, in the film. It can be, yeah, definitely. But I think any actor that's been an auditioning actor has had experiences like the ones that she has in the film. Um, so that was pretty resonant for me, I would say. I really felt uh, a connection to Sebastian's uh, plight to save jazz, even though I <laughs> had no knowledge of it or, <laughs> or natural, abil natural ability for it. You but I still comfy. felt like it was up to me somehow to, to save it. Since you were a child. Since I was a child. You did seem more comfortable behind the synth. Oh yeah, the C, the C board. The C board. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Ah. No, I think that this, the, the central message of the film of the importance of pursuing your dreams despite the obstacles is something that, even if you're not an actor or an artist, is something that most people can relate to. And so, um, you know, uh, painting this kind of what-if scenario just seems to seem to be something that uh, was yeah, easy for me to connect to, but also felt like maybe something easy for, for everyone else as well. It's a common theme through life. Yeah, that's right. I should have said that. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. You said it. Better answer. Uh, <laughs> the wonderfully named Ashley Moose has got a question for you, Damien. Uh, hello, Ashley Moose. Did you have Emma and Ryan in mind for these roles, or did they have to go through a crippling audition process? <laughs> <laughs> Great film, <laughs> FYI. Uh, crippling audition process. Well, uh, Emma thinks that I went to see her in Cabaret as like a, a, a way of auditioning her. As a test. Um, which is not really true, because I think I'd already offered you the role <laughs> But don't you think you would have been like, oh, never mind? No. I mean, really? the, the, the reality is actually that, yeah, back when I was first writing it, I was kind of, I had my sort of pie-in-the-sky version of the movie was, was with Emma and Ryan. Um, uh, there was even a, my, my, there was like a producer, <laughs> I'm not going to name names, there was a producer like a, or, or slash exec friend of, of mine and, and, and Justin's, the composers, um, and we like, you know, he's like, oh, how's that musical going? Like, who, who do you think would be good in the movie? And we said, oh, you know, it'd really be cool if like, you know, maybe it was like Emma Stone, Ryan Gosling, we'll see. And I remember they, they kind of looked at my composer and went like, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I hope they're watching now. Um, uh, Facebook but that, Live. That was that was like six uh, serving it cold. Six uh, six years ago, you know, and so it just kind of it it, uh, it it took you know a sort of number of of twists and turns, and it was really actually wonderful to be able to actually make the movie with them, and and you know uh, actually get to work on it with them in in the fullest sense of that term, you yeah. know, in in terms of true collaboration and really um, having a lengthy rehearsal process and. Um, I think that was the, you know, that was actually the real, the real joy of it, aside from just what I knew they would bring to it, just from afar. No, like one, it must have been one hell of a rehearsal process. It must have been like made the Matrix look look easy. You kind of like the, the, the amount of the what did they have to do for the Matrix? Well, acrobatics and ninja stuff. Oh, yeah. Learn how to yeah, fly. Yeah. You guys had yeah. to dance and, and learn how to play piano, I presume. And we mm -hmm. did fly a bit too. Mm -hmm. True. Did it take a while? How long? How long? How long was the rehearsal process for this? Three months, and but I think Ryan was doing piano for even a little longer than that. For like six and a half years. Yeah. <laughs> in my Good mind. foresight. Yeah. In his mind. Um, no, but Damien had set up this kind of uh, um, musical boot camp, if you will. Will you? Joyous. Okay. It was joyous, and <laughs> it was just no, just a, a, a space where there was a room for uh, dancing, and a room I had a piano in one room, and. Uh, wardrobe was there and uh, there were people dancing on cars in the parking lot and the scenic painters were painting and it just was a really infectious and creative place with a lot of energy and everybody was kind of feeding off one another's energy and it was um, it was uh, I don't know I think that was that was um, it was joyous. I kind of wish people would stop <laughs> feeding off of my energy so much because like well, emotional stop, vampires. Maybe if you stop feeding them <laughs> like your a bunch energy. Of emotional vampires you know? everywhere. Uh, Emma, uh, Chloe Collins <laughs> would like to know which was your favorite scene to shoot? I think ultimately it was the, the hilltop duet um, number that we shoot, uh, that we shot in Griffith Park um, because we had rehearsed that dance number for about four months by the time we shot it. So, and we had an hour a day to get it. We had two days wow. shooting it at Magic Hour. Um, so the stakes were really high, but it was really amazing and everyone was kind of, you know, jumping up and down and I would 
dare say joyous <laughs> when we when we got it. So that it's was gonna be really on the billboard fun. by the end of the by the by the time we come off Facebook Live. Joyous oh. Facebook <laughs> Emma Live. Emma Stone in brackets. <laughs> um, Ryan, uh, Sarah Spillers. Come feed on her energy. Don't yeah, don't. And, and even <laughs> if please she, don't. Even if she <laughs> please pins, don't. Even if she pins you down. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sarah Spillers uh, for you, Ryan. Uh, you told Ellen. Uh, that your musical sequences were filmed in a single take. Hmm. How many times did you rehearse a sequence before filming it? Did you tell Ellen that? I presume Ellen... What Ellen are we talking Ellen. about? I presume the famous Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, I presume. And I told her... You told her that your musical sequences, sequences were filmed in a single take. Yeah, that's true, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, like long takes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how many times did you rehearse the sequence before filming that single take? Okay, I get it. It sounds like an accusation, but it's really just a question. Yeah, she does sound <laughs> quite <laughs> aggressive. Yeah. Sarah, I'm a little defensive, relaxed. I apologize. Relaxed. Um, All right, cal calm down. <laughs> well, if you'd let me feed off your energy. Frank, could you, uh, no. I'm well, I, don't, I couldn't say how many times we rehearsed. We rehearsed for three months. Constantly. It was um, at really any time we had a free uh, Let's say moment. 20 times a day for three months, Sarah. Will that do, do you? I think that'll, that'll probably satisfy us. A lot. Uh, 60,000 times. That is, I reckon it was about that. Um, Damien, Zach Cameron would like to know, uh, after the undeniable success of Whiplash, uh, what is it about jazz that speaks to you on a level? And try and do it without mansplaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, um, <clears throat> thanks, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you're a man explaining it, so just try. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I, I played. What was it? the question? Was uh, the question was after after Whiplash? Oh, uh, what, what is it about? What jazz? is it about jazz right. that really kind of? Speaks? Well, I mean, it, it's actually kind of hard to say for me because it's just. Uh, I think it's just it happened to be the music that I grew up playing and listening to the most, and in a kind of. Um, it was playing in the household. It was all. It, it was. Uh, I happened to be going to a school that had a really you know, intense and top-notch jazz programs. So all these things were actually kind of out of my control. It was just sort of the circumstances um, that uh, it, it became this important thing in my, in, in my life. Um, and I had a very, like, very formative, um, uh, very uh, intense teacher uh, who, you know, um, kind of drilled a lot of things into me, uh, including a passion for, for the music. Um, and for jazz history and for the whole kind of uh, mythology of it. So I, so I think in a way it's just, it's just those sort of personal, you know, things in my past that kind of keep drawing me to it. I don't play jazz as much anymore, uh, uh, but, I, uh, but I think that is the reason probably that I, you know, kind of the past few movies I've, I've sort of... Uh, it's in your blood. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's in my... It, it certainly it was something I wanted to be in my blood. I really, I tried very hard to be a jazz drummer and I just never was quite good enough, but I could, uh, but, but at least I can make movies about it. <laughs> it's, you know, the next best. Not a bad payoff. <laughs> um, Jane Cunningham, this is for you, Ryan. Uh, what song from the film uh, really resonated for you when you first heard the soundtrack? Which was the one that you were looking forward to most to recording? And, and the first song that I heard was the um, central theme of the movie that I play on the piano when uh, my character so meets stuff. Emma's car character for the first time. No, um, it's just the central theme. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. What's the name of it? Me and Sebastian's. Me and I mean, it's just the theme. theme. Yeah, me and Sebastian's. I mean, there's no song. There's no song for it. Oh, okay. I, maybe that's the track. Yeah, the the. The do 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 do. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is it? We call it me and Sebastian's theme. Oh, we did originally. I just call it the theme. Oh, After I met with okay. Damien for the first time, I asked him if I could hear, you know, I was just... Was that the first thing I sent? Yeah, you just sent yeah. me that. Yeah. And uh, it just got me, and it still does. It's, it's, it's I should be sick of it, but I'm not. It's, it's um, I think it's uh, so, so... They haven't even good. seen it. I keep forgetting that people haven't seen it yet. It's out today. Uh, the, 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 mm. there's a, Why are you watching this? Just go to the theater and <laughs> go watch Lala. They'll yeah, be watching it on the phone already. <laughs> uh, they're watching it on the Oof. phone in the theater. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> You're right. That this is actually, these are all people live on Facebook. <laughs> in the You're theater. in the theater <laughs> watching <laughs> the movie right now. Um, for all of you, uh, Ariba Siddiqui. <laughs> Uh, I love this movie so much and I've had the soundtrack on repeat for weeks. Uh oh, so she's in the theatre. Heart, <laughs> right now. heart eyes, uh, smiley emoji. <laughs> Which song is your favourite now? I guess yes, you've just answered that for you, Ryan, but what about you, uh, Emily and Damien? Which is I, your... I love City of Stars. 
City of Stars gets stuck in my head a lot, and it's a little bit embarrassing at this point because I'll walk around singing it, and I'm like, oh, it's not a very... <laughs> Your own song, who? Yeah, well, it's not my, my song. Look, George Michael used to dance to his own music in nightclubs, I say, you're okay. All right, you know what? It, then it's fine. I think We're fine. Actually, good. that's okay. Um, uh, for me, uh, why not? I mean, um, I don't know, I mean, I, I, I think the, the, in terms of, like, looking back on the process, the one that actually came out the most, the most naturally and quickly and that felt the most emotional coming out was was the, was the sort of uh, we call it audition the sort of audition number that that's my favorite well. that uh, reminds that, me of that Emily does. Connection, a little bit uh, so that's actually yeah so someone else mentioned that I um, thank I mean thank you because I think that's, that's a, a beautiful song um, and uh, uh, I don't know. I just I just remember when I was first kind of played that melody, and when Benj Pasek and Justin Paul are, are incredible lyricists, uh, uh, first read the lyrics to that song, and it just kind of it had been this placeholder in the script for years. Uh, that was actually one of the last songs to kind of come into place, but when it did, it was so kind of organic and effortless. Um, and it was probably also one of the first numbers that I played for both Ryan and Emma. Um, you know, when they came on board, and just uh, yeah, I, I just uh, it just seemed to kind of sum the movie up. Well, you can go and listen to the even before you go. On the way to the theatre, you can put on Spotify or, or Apple Music and check out the soundtrack now because it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, Paige Gui uh, for Ryan and Emma. You've been exposed to lots great. of different dance styles uh, while shooting the movie. Which, which one is your favourite? Tap. Tap? Tap dancing, definitely. I don't think I'm well, a, a fantastic <coughs> tap dancer at this point, but it's so much fun. Um, well, I think you're a fantastic Tap dancer Look at that me. silver right. tongue cavalier. And no, but you are. But what was the name of that dance step that we did? What was the name of that dance that we did outside of Angel's Sham. Flight? The Shim Sham. Yeah, the Shim Sham. The Shim Sham's fun. Our um, one of our assistant choreographers, Jillian, was a, is a great tap dancer, and she said that the international handshake for tap dancers is this thing called the Shim Sham. So anybody at home that tap dances, no matter where you live, apparently, do you the know the Shim Sham. So right, okay. If you ever see us on the street. Just do the shim Just start the shim sham, and we'll, uh, be, we'll try to well, do it along with you. You said that one day you'll be terrified. <laughs> we're gonna have to. We're gonna be called the shim sham somewhere. <laughs> shim and sham. Shave and haircut. Two bits. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damien, uh, Robin and N- Ewan, I believe. Apologies if I got that wrong. Uh, did your vision of this film change as you guys were filming it, or is it? Have you pretty much? Uh, did you manage to stay on target from from paper to to screen? Yeah, I, th- I think the, the the broad strokes and and again that sort of tone that I was talking about, I think that really, um, you know, that's something actually I'm really happy about. That 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 I think it just it really is the movie that that I set out to make way that back when. So that, that we all set out to make. Yeah, it's it, it's actually also really wonderful that I I never was in a position where I had to compromise in any major creative way. You know, uh, the 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 studio let me do what I wanted to do. Um, I felt like all of us were allowed to take risks and to really try things out um, without regard to what would be commercial or, you know, so it it was actually this wonderful kind of process. Certainly lots of things changed as we, you know, as we found, uh, you know, as we explored the characters and as we explored the the numbers and as we put the movie together, things changed in the way that you want them to change. They got better, is what I think happened, But, but the... The, the idea behind the movie never, never wavered. Good for you. Um, for all of you, from uh, Christy Hodge. Hello, Christy. Uh, throughout the entire experience, which moment, is there a moment that stands out the most? Uh, what memory or lesson are you going to carry on with you for the rest of your days? Which I added the end bit. <clears throat> which is the thing that, that kind of really stuck with you? Can I go first? Of course. <laughs> Great. So <laughs> I, it was, it was so much fun. This process, kind of what Ryan was talking about, about this area that was created for us to rehearse, and um, it was the production office. And so the whole crew was basically localized in this production office setting, and so we all really got to know each other um, for the three months that we were rehearsing, and then we were shooting for two months. So we spent almost half a year all together, and I've never felt so close to a crew in that way. And I think it's also a big testament to Damien because everyone feels uh, very equal on his set and everyone felt very listened to, I think. And it was a, it was like a really beautiful environment to be in. And I ended up working with a lot of the same crew on the next movie that I did, 
not these two, but pretty much everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And all we could she do was talk. Ask. Yeah, she specifically I, I asked. I specifically yeah. asked for the, to she not do like, this. This is perfect. Because they're energy, but for again, two things. They're emotional vampires. So two um, black clouds hanging over. Exactly. Oh. No, no, no. They suck up all the energy. So <laughs> I, I, um, <laughs> I, uh, but we were talking about La La Land constantly, and we still I, I talk to everybody. Like I just the takeaway is probably um, that that kind of collaboration and that kind of you know. Um, creative communication, all the C's, you know? Collaboration, creative communication, yeah. cool, mm -hmm. you know, co confidence. Mm -hmm. cool. Um, was just so, so much fun, and that's my probably my biggest memory and something that, you know, I, I, I wish it could always feel like that. Amazing. What about you, Ron? I think it was just, it was so... Uh, you loved your trailer. My, yeah. <laughs> One the smell, trailer. there was like a, it was like a lavender. Nice. <laughs> just really into that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Damien. It was, an essential, it was a lavender essential oil. Yeah, the bedding was just lovely. <laughs> it's a natural uh, mosquito repellent, too, so it felt like, I loved how well, quiet it was in there. What, what could just so quiet in Australia. Shut out the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, be by himself. <laughs> it just smell my wrists. Um, that, and then a close second, would just be that watching Damien reach for this thing that was kind of just outside of his grasp and everyone having to do the same in order to help him achieve it and just in the process of the rehearsal just seeing everyone get there at a certain point you know yeah. it was uh it was it was it was so um you know encouraging to see what you're capable of if if if, if pushed to it yeah. you know and um, um, I think we all had these, this sense of accomplishment when it was over that is pretty unique to this film, although you have it when you finish movies, but this, this, uh, such a collective experience of that feeling. Is that the same for you, Dave? And the lavender, which was and the really lavender, nice. And the, you just the, love that essential oil. Yeah. The cotton counts on the cushions, yeah. everything was just wonderful in that trailer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's, uh, I mean, just what Ryan was saying, the, the, that feeling, um, <clears throat> you know, and, and I've, I've won, uh, one memory that sticks in my mind was, uh, you know, thinking of, of everyone that it took to make this movie. The, the, when we were filming uh, the scene with Ryan and Emma, um, you know, that we were referring to earlier of, of when, when their, uh, their first kind of big dance number together, yeah. which happens on a hilltop, and, you know, it was a very difficult shoot. Uh, and tricky to pull off, um, and uh, and you know not just for Ryan and Emma, but also for the camera crew uh, behind the camera and sort of choreographing those movements and everything. And I remember, I remember like between it was either between rehearsals or like between takes, um, I caught out of the corner of my eye um, one of our you know after Ryan and Emma had been you know had done this number either as rehearsal or, or, or as filming for a few times, I caught out of the corner of my eye one of the camera. Uh, uh, w w w one of the crew members in our camera department, who's just, it was this really kind of, you know, very burly sort of, uh, you know, kind of tough guy. Yeah, so yeah. Basically, the last guy you would expect to be into a musical, um, <laughs> and he was just like happened to be like walking over to, you know, to to uh, to the crane, and like not like thinking anyone was looking at him, and he just did this like little like pirouette <laughs> as he was moving, <laughs> little like total like Gene Kelly dance move. Right. And I was just like. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, that's amazing. If that, if that, if he got so infected by just watching Ryan and Emma a few times to like, you know, uh, uh, to do that, if that could happen, then maybe we actually all have a shot at, oh, this, yeah. at this movie, sort of doing what we want. It does. It makes it makes it makes you want to dance and sing and fall in love. It's, it's brilliant. Um, uh, Aliu Gambo. Hello, Aliu. Uh, hey, Damien. He says he's very casual. Very casual, are you? Uh, what if any hey, musical? Hey, man. <laughs> yeah. hey, demo. What if any musicals inspired you to develop La La Land? Did you ever? Uh, I mean, I mean, a, a lot, a lot of them. I, th I think uh, if I had to pick one, it was probably you know that sort of maybe changed my mind about what musicals could do. It was this French musical from the '60s called The Umbrellas of Cherbourg um, that I uh, that that we. Uh, uh, or, or that, you know, I mean, it was actually, I think, the first movie that, because we would do kind of cast and crew screenings during, um, during rehearsal sometimes, and I think it was, it was the first or one of the first movies that, that we showed. It was a movie that I saw back when I was a teenager, and it just kind of, um, it felt like a different approach to the musical, because it had all the magic and the spectacle that you want from a musical, but it also had a very sort of realistic story and a very kind of... Uh, uh, very emotional story that wasn't always the kind of emotion you think you're going to get from a musical. Um, 
And so it just kind of opened my eyes to this whole other world that, that could be, you know, that could be communicated through, through the genre. Great. Uh, Nick Deal doesn't have a question. What are you doing then, mate? Um, I just want to thank you for making a truly inspiring piece of cinema that has further inspired me to make it into the film industry myself. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. Cool. Aww. Thanks, Nick. Um, Abby Copson, hey Emma, another casual one. Nice. Yeah. Has your involvement in has your involvement in La La Land made you want to go back to Broadway? I would love to go back to Broadway or the West End or <laughs> not Broadway oh, West good. End, just a theater somewhere. But I don't think I could do another musical on stage. Um, I Look, don't think exhausting. I have the pipes for it that they don't hold up that well. So. But I, I mean, I would if there's a musical theater again. Where, where someone just is a mute, maybe. Yeah, I would be a great mute in a musical. A musical. <laughs> a musical. Mm -hmm. uh, joyous. Mm -hmm. The joyous <laughs> musical. Um, last question. Oh, no, hold on a second. Uh, I'm going forward. Uh. Backwards. Last question. Well done, Amy Smith. You got the last one in. Uh, I guess this is to all of you guys. What advice would you give to young and aspiring actors today? Brian? Um, did you say Brian? <laughs> Brian. That's his name. <laughs> what advice would I give to you? Well, I think it's different uh, now than it was when I started. You know, that you, the version that's presented in the movie of moving to Hollywood and auditioning and all of that is, is still a viable option. But you also can, you know, make movies on your iPhone and uh, put them online or, you know, make things with your friends. And there's just so many more ways to create opportunities for yourself. It's a good way of learning the chops, isn't it? Or just, you can create, you know, things that are as, uh, like in, in, they say in the film, that are as interesting as you are. You know, that you can, you don't have to, you know, uh, wait for someone to give you an opportunity. You can kind of make those opportunities for yourself a little easier now. All right, then I'll just stop auditioning <laughs> and <laughs> but yeah, any, start any advice writing my own things. <laughs> I was just trying to remember what my line was make in the history. movie because that sounded, I'll make history instead. There yeah, we go. You know. You've been in editing for a long time. Then my than work is done here. <laughs> Great. I've seen the movie a few more times. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Any advice for aspiring uh, young Emma Stones out there? Um, well, <laughs> to I all think the young that, Emma Stones. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Um, I think that that's good uh, advice on, on Ryan's part. I think, you know, it's interesting in the movie. I, I did a, I just did a, an interview where we interviewed each other with Molly Shannon from Saturday Night Live in, you know, in I know, the States. I don't know if you guys watch SNL over here. Yeah, but yeah. Um, And she told me, she was like, oh, yeah, when I moved to L.A., I was 21 and I uh, just did a one-woman show right away. I wasn't auditioning. They didn't get me. And I was like, you did that right away? She was like, yeah, I put on my own show. I did my own characters. And that's w what Mia kind of comes to in the yeah. movie, my character in the movie. But... I think that's so incredible to have that kind of confidence in your talent Braver, to like yeah. find a space and invite people to come see you and um, give yourself that sort of platform, which is sort of what Ryan's talking about, you know, making your own stuff. I think that sort of empowerment of yourself when you're in the position of auditioning for a bunch of stuff can be really uh, can be really great. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, and Damien, finally, what, um, how, how could someone catch your eye in, in an audition? In, in an audition? Yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't know. I mean, one thing I think I wanted to try to capture in, in, in the movie is that auditions are kind of, it's like this, uh, it's this sort of unfortunate system where it's, it's, I think it's very hard for actors to be their best selves in, in an audition. And so I think uh, it's actually, for whoever's behind the table, whether it's me or a casting director or, or whomever, it's kind of their job to try to see through some of the, some of the the restrictions of an audition and just try to see I mean that's why sometimes it's good to just talk to people I mean I, th I think I think what's what's uh, what's actually part of uh, Mia's uh, Emma Stone's character uh, what's part of her journey in the movie is 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 actually somewhat what was my journey as well is trying to find a way to make stuff personal you know and try to find a way to make it make it a reflection of yourself that doesn't mean that you just write stories about yourself or you just play a version of yourself but it means that you have to kind of find a way of, of like burrowing your own innermost kind of private maybe even embarrassing you know uh, experiences or emotions or feelings into whatever you're doing even if you're writing something about the middle ages or playing an alien you know from from a, from a different galaxy like you're trying to you try to you try to make it uh, 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 I don't know why 
Emily's laughing, but you try to, <laughs> you know, I was making a point. We try to make it, uh, you try to make it feel like it's from our galaxy. No, you, you made a good point. I was just, I had a joke going in my head where I was just going to say. About the galaxy? No, it isn't, isn't every part an alien from a different galaxy? Like I, as <laughs> I thought every part I've ever played was supposed to be an alien. <laughs> that, that's what acting is, right? You're playing an alien from a different galaxy. You can't. Uh, it's a, it didn't work. You know, <coughs> I don't even mind. know what's we're happening live. anymore. And uh, we're live. Thank you, Amy, uh, for your question. <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really sorry we couldn't get to all of the questions. No, there are lots more. We're too busy talking about <laughs> aliens from galaxies. We're just going to talk about <laughs> aliens it didn't work. and joyous <laughs> and <laughs> feeding, <laughs> off, <coughs> feeding off Emma's <coughs> alien energy. Uh, Please don't. <laughs> uh, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, Damien Giselle, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Facebook for this. <laughs> Uh, lovely Q and A. La La Land is out right now. What the hell are you waiting for? Go! It is fantastic. <laughs>